So here's a question for you. When was the last time you made a quiche entirely from scratch? Not a crustless one or a cheater's quiche with one of these things. I'm talking homemade filling, crust, the real McCoy. If it's been a while, don't feel bad. I know a lot of great cooks who wouldn't attempt a scratch quiche if their life depended on it. Too intimidating, they tell me. Now, that's a real shame because a homemade quiche isn't difficult to make and it couldn't be more agreeable. You can fill it with all sorts of different vegetables and cheeses. You can serve it for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and it reheats like a charm so it tastes as good tomorrow as it did today. Something I love in my quiche, and we're going to use it in this gorgeous Swiss chard and mushroom quiche, is creme fraiche, a sort of super rich sour cream. I don't buy it. It's crazy expensive and can be hard to find too. I just make my own with heavy cream and buttermilk, about one and a half cups of the former and three to four tablespoons of the latter. Just stir together and let it sit at room temperature overnight. It'll thicken up like yogurt and look like this the next day. Everyone loves a spinach quiche, me included, but I love Swiss chard even more. Spinach cooks down to nothing. Swiss chard has more body and texture. The ribs are delicious, but you'll want to remove them. Rinse and dice them and set them aside. They're firmer than the leaves, so they'll go into the skillet early with the onions. Gather up the leaves and chop them up good too. Give the leaves a good dunking in cold water to remove any riffraff and then let them drain in a colander. So let's saute the onions in those chopped stems. We'll give that a few minutes, then add the garlic and the Swiss chard. What do you mean my pan is too small? Don't be silly. That's what lids are for. Cook it down for a few minutes until the leaves get a little tender. For the custard, we'll use the aforementioned creme fraiche. We'll whisk in a little flour. That'll tighten up the custard. In goes the eggs, from Happy Chickens, of course, because they taste better. Half and half, salt, pepper, and Dijon mustard, which I totally love in my quiche. I should probably say something about the crust since we're about to put everything in there and bake our quiche. It's a mostly butter crust with a touch of lard, and I partially pre-baked it in my two inch tall quiche pan because this is a generous filling and we need lots of room. If you don't have one like it, you can just use a deep dish pie pan. Pre-baking the crust is the thing that'll set your quiche apart from flabby crusted imposters, so no, you can't skip that part. I usually line my pastry shells with foil and weigh it down with beans, but these days I'm into these ginormous coffee filters. They really do a great job. By the way, these funny looking things you see on my crust are very thin slices of cheese that I put over the holes in my crust while it was still hot. They melt and then plug the holes so nothing runs out. If you weren't sure, the holes are there to keep the dough from puffing up when you take out the beans. So there you have it, the sauteed Swiss chard mixture, the mushrooms I forgot to add to the saute, half of our cheese, the creme fraiche custard, and the rest of the cheese. This is Havarti, but cheddar, gruyere, and just about any other melting cheese would be super. Now bake the quiche for about 45 to 55 minutes at 375 degrees and you're good. And then throw a party. This is a great dish for a crowd and this bigger quiche should feed 10 of your friends, only eight if you turn your back for more than a minute. And that's it. Now be a good friend and pass this video along to someone who loves quiche. Thanks a lot.